And yep, I was right. And straight in front of us already, we got ourselves two ingots. And we already given it a gener generous amount of clips out of that. So we can get ourselves nice and started here. Alright, so uh, this here next segment is going to be... I guess I'm going to be tackling this a little bit differently here. Um, I'm going to be switching on over to post-commentary as I go about collecting all the steel ingots since it's just going to be a lot of collecting, so I'm going to need my full attention on trying to get all the stuff all in one go, so let's go ahead and do just that. Alright, I've now switched into post-commentary and I've sped up the footage about like two times so that we'll be able to collect all the ingots as fast as possible. And hopefully it's not going to be too fast, or rather it'll be just enough so you'll be able to comprehend where everything is at. Or rather, just how... Well, seeing how it's going this fast, I really don't know how well of a description that I could be doing in terms of like where all the ingots are located. Also, the anim... Uh, I was about to say animation, but the editing here is rather, rather quick on my part. I, d I just don't know if it's like too jerky so you'd be able to know or where everything is at. It's not all that smooth in my part just because I did it very hastily. But you know, this is the things that's what happened when it comes to having to spruce things up all in one go, really. Cause cause to give you an idea about the recording sessions that I do, I record every Monday morning, and then throughout Monday night into Tuesday, I do the editing. Sometimes I get it all done, sometimes I only get it partially done, and then I just do the rest, like, going into Wednesday. And then, Wednesdays are the days when I start loading up my first batch of videos for the week, depending on how much I'm recording throughout this whole time. Just to give you a little bit of fancy trivia there. So yeah, having to go through this whole ordeal of, like, speeding things up and having very jerky editing going on here, not really the best, but... I mean, it gets the point across where I can show you where all the notable ingots are at. So the majority of all the steel ingots that you're going to come across is going to be here in the steel yard. I mean, appropriately, na appropriately named, of course. There's like a total of 79 of them. And there's like two other locations where it has the rest of them. The supply place or whatever it's called, supply something, will have the majority of the other stuff. And then in that one spot where we walked into the steel yard called the like the abandoned place or something abandoned mill or I don't, I don't, I'm not sure there's only three however we didn't have access to that until we get the initial 10 ingots straight from the steel yard first yeah we got some nasty trogs here I killed a couple of them off screen and there's also going to be some wild men or something or wild hitmen or whatever they're called as we go across this treacherous place or rather, treacherous. I mean, it's, it's no danger to me. I mean, I'm all hip up on, like, damage resistance right now, even though, like, every now and then I'm wearing the torn slave outfit, which not really all that necessary in terms of later on, really. Just because I do get later, or better armor, like, in return from collecting all these ingots. Which, even then, the armor that I do get in return... Uh, not going to be holding on to that forever. In fact, like all of the stuff that I'm I'm getting rewarded with with collecting all these ingots, I will not end up using anyway. So it kind of begs the question of like why am I collecting them to begin with? Uh good question, I don't know, but that seems to be the side effect of me being a collectathon sort of OCD sort of guy. I'm not entirely sure, but you know them's the breaks, really. So yeah, as you progress through, eventually you're going to come across bigger piles of uh, steel ingots. Some of them are going to be more into the nook and crannies. So, so anyway, anyway, to explain about the jerky editing out of here, it's because there are moments where I like I pause and I stand there because I was looking at the Wikipedia page. Yeah, I know cheating. I know, but <laughs> I'm, I tell you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an expert knowing where everything is at on the top of my head. I just want to be able to you know, get everything according to the list. However, I'm only going to be looking up stuff on the Wikipedia page only for the DLC that, like, I have played, which the pit is being included one of them. There's going to be two DLC that I have not 
ever played, just to mind you. So I'm going through like the order of like the ones that I have played to the ones that I have never played. So pretty much when I get to the last two ones that I've never played, those we're going to be completely blind and uh, we're just going to see what happens from there. So yeah, there's really not much else to say. I mean, I need to try to fill in <laughs> the rest of the commentary with some other like blind stuff to talk about. Um, I suppose I can talk about the results of the, uh, the Q&A announcement sort of thing that I posted up a while ago. Uh, that has been closed for a while now. If you followed on Twitter, I gave an announcement, or rather, just someplace, well, most namely on Twitter, that I've closed it up on the 4th of July sometime at midnight. And I've gotten all the questions. And I'll get into the process of making that Q&A episode uh, pretty soon. In fact, I need to do that very soon, just because I'm kind of having a little bit of a deadline, sort of a sense, sometime around August, you know, in order to get things uh, pumped out with videos that I'm wanting to get done at a certain time, things like that. I will say that it's going to be very interesting what you're going to expect for the episode, that's for sure. So I suppose I can go ahead and fill in with the rest of this video we're just talking about things out of Fallout 4, even though that there are some questions relating to Fallout 4 within the Q&A episode. I just don't know if I want to hold that on until then. I think some of them are asking me if I'm ever going to do like a Let's Play or something like that with Fallout 4. That one, I'll keep that on hold. But I will talk about like certain aspects of it that seems to be looking very forward to. So I guess with things like how well that Bethesda did with the presentation of it. Uh, they did su surprisingly well for their first show at the E3 conference. So I'm, I have to give it a hand to them having to give them a very good show on that part. And also just as a fun little side project, they did that, that Fallout sort of like vault sort of deal. That's like free to play sort of deal. I forgot what it's called, but yeah, you know, just some sort of like some sort of simulator of such. Just having to grow your own vault dwellers and having to go out of the vault and then, you know, just fight and bring in resources or something like that. Just crazy little things like that. I'm not too all that interested in those kind of simulators here just because you have to do a lot of multitasking. And for me, multitasking seems to be my weak point in some fashion. But I, I admire having to put their extra time having to produce something that's just for free. I gotta admire that. So yeah, when I when they revealed all the gameplay footage, all that stuff, um, I think like immediately, people were talking about like how the graphics <laughs> initially people were like whining and complaining about it, like how graphics is just like not up to par or something like that. I'm not really all that too keen on about it, really. I mean, when you do a comparison between this and Fallout 4, there's definitely a different significant change to that, just because it's a lot more colorful and vibrant, whereas so this one in vanilla is just tinted with green and everywhere. I mean, yeah, there's radiation everywhere, but should that realistically still be there? I mean, isn't like real life places like Chernobyl or something like that still affected with radiation and such? If that's, I mean, if that's the case, is that place still green over there? Well, don't quote me on that. I mean, I'm not sure what it is like, what Chernobyl is like right now, but I mean, I mean, that just goes to show you like how well I know about my history with real life stuff and shit. You know, other things to talk about, maybe probably some of the impl implementations of like, I think I stated before something about like how they're implementing the like special system or rather like how skills are non-existent or something like that. There was a bit of a confusion the last time that I came across that and explained to everyone about, you know, coming across skills or something like that. I think like all the skills that we've been, f that we've known for a while is now being moved over to perks. I'm not entirely sure because we did see there some sort of couple of screenshots about like how... There's like, oh, like required perk level of like science is like level two or something like that. So I'm guessing like the skills have been transferred over to perks now and we have like a perk related system. So I'm not sure how well that's going to turn out. 
And we do know that whatever it being, the skills are being in the form of actual skills or perks now, there's still those bobbleheads that corresponds to them in the same amount that we are familiar with. So, so that's all we know so far. Also, I'm trying my darn best trying to get my hands on like the Pip Boy edition of that stuff just because I want to have the like the novelty of the Pip Boy just to wear on my wrist. I mean, I know it's crazy expensive and I know it's just like falling in for the whole ploy of like pre ordering shit and all that stuff. But you know what? It's an investment in my end just because whether I'm going to be doing this as a let's play, whether it be immediately or in the future. Or I'm going to be doing this as a live stream on Twitch, whatever it may be. I'm, you know, we all know it's just going to be awesome to some regard. But I don't know, I'm still hyped up for it, most definitely. And if I wanted to go ahead and go a little bit off tangent here, but still something like Bethesda, Bethesda related, uh, let's talk about like Doom 4. Definitely talk about Doom 4. I'm, I too, I'm also hyped up for the game. However, people that I've come across generally already have a very displeasing opinion about it already, and I'm shocked by that. One of the reasons being like, oh, it's not fast-paced enough like the other other games and such. And I'm like, okay, granted, when they presented that at E3, the first half of the gameplay that they showed, yeah, that was slow, but that was for presentation purposes. The other half that they showed when they were like in hell, that felt a lot more involved. Like you definitely had to be on your feet. There was like starting to gang up on you and it was very quick moments for you had to like whip your weapon out at the right time or something like that. I thought that was fast paced enough for my taste. I don't know, I'm sure how much faster that anybody else wanted for that in that regard. So I think that was fine. Also the fact that the gameplay has been demonstrated with the use of a controller, people automatically think like, oh, us PC Master Race is not getting any special treatment here. They're targeting all the console light people and shit. And to that I say is like, don't assume that it's going to be bad just because it's targeting towards market uh, is marketing to the console people as well. I mean, us PC Master Race is going to get the same equal treatment as well, or maybe perhaps even better since you know that's where Doom originated is off of the PC. I mean, dear God. Don't automatically assume the worst. Pessim pessimistic thinking is not going to get anywhere with anyone in life. That's not why I like to go for. Be optimistic. That's all I'm saying. They should know that us PC Master Race people, <laughs> joking fashion, we're going to get ourselves a good game, of course. And just like that, we got ourselves 100 ingots. All right, let's go ahead and turn them in and back to live commentary. Well now, look who made it back. I'll take those ingots, Scab. You just get back in there and get about your business. You got a real knack for this. Here, this might help you work a little harder. Original owner can't use it anymore on account of decapitation. Looks good. Guess I could spare this. I'll just take those. Yeah, looks like you earned it. If you're heading back out there, these ought to help you with the trogs. Looks good. How about I give you some metal this time? Here, this armor was a special order for one of the hole fighters. Great against bullets, but didn't help him when he got pushed off the bridge. More metal for the mill. Sure thing, bit of a weird one here. Found it from some sucker out of town. Some genius got to tinkering with his laser. Polished metal barrel, a few prisms in there, and he got this lethal light show. Nothing like some heavy labor, huh? You bet I do. Check out this cutting edge of fashion. Wear this armor, and everyone's gonna want to get close to you. Which just means they'll be inside your blast radius, huh? Nothing like some heavy labor, huh? Guess she earned this. Used to belong to a desert priest. Said wearing it made him bulletproof. Of course, that didn't stand up to a little testing. But damn if it wasn't a gloriously fun time. More metal for the mill. All the metal you're bringing in, I suppose it's worth giving you something to really help with those drugs. Here, 
This thing's mauled trogs and ghouls from here to Monroeville. Give it a whirl. Looks good. I probably shouldn't. But damn if you ain't earned it. Here. This is the best gun I ever had. A little slower on the trigger, but she makes up for it in power and accuracy. Use her in good health. Looks good. Well, I'll be damned. That makes a hundred ingots you found. And here I remember thinking you'd be lucky to bring back any at all. Ain't no question. You earned the treasure of my collection. This armor goes all the way back to when the Brotherhood tried to wipe out the pit. Some of the tribals who worshipped Asher made it to look like their god. Try it on, and you'll feel a little like a god yourself. Yep. Guess you got every last one out there. You're one hell of a stealer, kid. Nice line right there. <laughs> All right, then. Come back when you've got more. But I've gotten everything. Damn damn. Default lines and all that shit. All right. Ugh. So after all of that grinding of finding on all the steel ingots, we finally got all the glorious stuff that we got from out all that, including yeah, this here is the Mauler. Although there's man opener is what I got as well, which are two unique ones. I'm not sure what the differences are, but eh. It's a, ooh, perforator. Um. Yeah, I should probably go ahead and rebind some of this stuff here. Question is, is it safe enough for me to even wear wear this or anything like that? Or should I still wear my slave outfit or anything? I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, all the other armors that I got here... Not necessarily anything that I would want to wear all the time. But here, let's see about trying to get this and that on. Yeah. Hopefully this will keep me nice and protected from here on in. I should be in the okay to wear this. Well, now that we finally got that collection stuff all done, we can go ahead and continue on with the main quest. And trust me, if I was pre-doing that live, it would have been boring, so it was best as I had to do that in post. Hmm. Alright, so everything seems to be in order. I mean, yeah, I mean, if ever it was handing me to this personally... Whoa, what? Yeah, if everyone was meant to be given that to me in the first place, then I should be clear enough to wear this. Technically. But yeah, I definitely kept myself busy. That's for sure. But anyway. Let's head back in here and have a talk. Ah. Well, good. Just in time. Asher has ordered everyone into the square. Rumor has it that he's going to open up the arena. That's perfect for us. It's simple, really. From time to time, Asher opens up the arena. Any slave who wants to can fight against the gladiators. If you win, you get your freedom. More importantly, you get an audience with Asher. It's the only way a slave will ever get to talk to him directly. You fight, you win, and when you talk to Asher, you take the cure. And he'll just give it to me? Not exactly, no. Warner has a distraction planned. We haven't been making these weapons for nothing, you know. But when you're meeting with Asher, you'll be close enough to grab the cure. Get it and bring it to me. Now let's get out there and listen to Asher's speech. There'll be hell to pay if the guards catch us in here. Gotcha. Well, let me go ahead and first rebind a lot of this stuff here. I definitely want to go ahead and mess about with, like, the mauler here. Uh, let's see, we'll put that there. Steel knuckles, we'll make it... For. Now, do I have any other plentiful amount of ammunition for anything? Because the only one seems to be, yeah, just my uh, assault rifle. Okay. Although my perforator uses the same ammunition anyway. Right? Yeah. I bring you good news. 
We stand at the dawn of a new golden age, where others merely survive. We thrive! And while I have led your efforts, it has been by your own strength that you have earned all the envy of the world. And most of all, they envy our victories in the struggle for freedom. Because yes, freedom is what we all work and so, towards. To celebrate this struggle, I ask my loyal workers, who among you is prepared to fight for your freedom? Okay. Audio is not being all synced up correctly. Right here. We have one. This man here will fight in the hole. Come on, Asher. Will you send someone to the hole who actually stands a chance? Sir, you carry not only the dream that workers can become free, but that we may all someday become truly free from the threats dismissed. of our world. Great overlap. <laughs> you head down to the hole. Talk to Phaedra. She sets up the fights. So that's apparently Aster right up there, huh? Hmm. You look like we don't have enough to do, Peon. Alright, so which way is it? Down? Oh, where is it? Let's see, map. Oh, I have to go back through the mill? That's where it's telling me? Am I going the wrong way? Alright, it looks like it's down this way then. Yeah, 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 here we go. Goodness, this power armor. <laughs> That's why I don't want to equip it all that often, it just weighs me down. This must be the way in. <laughs> so you're the dumbass scab that signed up to fight in the hole, huh? Well, head on down. Phaedra's waiting for you. <laughs> nice smoking lips you got there. <laughs> that little facial animation flub up. Thank you. <laughs> and what are you doing down here, slave? Don't tell me your pale ass is gonna throw down. You don't sign up. You tell me you want to fight, I set up a fight. You die, and I repeat it with the next jackass slave who comes in here. Sound good? You want in? Come on, death's gotta be better than your life, am I right? You have what you take in with you. But if that's not enough, there are a couple of things in that locker over there. I probably won't need them. Hurry up! I want to see you die. Very well then. Woman who's about to turn into a ghoul, apparently. Which way is it? Oh, wait. Ah, oh, shit. Hang on a second. I think I know what's going on here. Alright, so it seems that I came across a predicament that I figured that I would end up running into at some point within the DLC. And that is a commenter posted a few parts ago regarding a bug with this DLC and with the unofficial Fallout 3 patch. And that caused a dialogue option to be non-existent, saying that I want to fight in the arena or something like that. And I believe the fix for this is as such, I need to go ahead and type in set stage, and I believe for the load number is 03 on my end. Then 0010 8B space 125. Now, yep, here we go. That sets the thing correctly. You again? Back from. Okay, it says now I'm ready to fight. Are you sure about that? Once I lock the door, there's no going back. Arena rules. If you're ready, just step on in. And now it's unlocked. Okay, excellent. They will fight! They will die! And all for you! All for your entertainment!
Uh. Whoa, hi. How about we get this out of the way? <laughs> oh god, that's loud. Well, I suppose I'm free to go ahead and loot off of their corpses as well. Yeah, I figured that I was able to find a fix for this nice and easy. So anyway, I won. Wow. Impressive, slave. Those were some of the toughest scabs around here. You've got some fight in you, it seems. But I wouldn't get too excited. I'm sure Asher's got something special planned for your next fight. Here's something for the rads. Enjoy it while you can. Come back when you're ready for your next fight. All right. Uh, I need to have a look over through all the weapons yet again. Now I want to prefer having that Chinese assault rifle over anything. Bet there's probably a lot of stuff that I won't need. You know what? I can just go ahead and store a lot of the useless crap in here. Besides, I'm going to be getting my stuff back when I'm all done. Yeah. There's the whole bunch of the metal blaster. I think that's a unique. So I might... So I'll have to hold on to that one. And the perforator. I think I'll have to hold on to that one, too. I think I may have come across that before, but I just don't remember. And I think the steel knuckles is a unique. Just because it looks the same like brass knuckles, except, you know, it's made of steel. Eh, switchblade can just go away. Not really a flamer or that. Alrighty then, I'm all good. You again? Back Yeah, let's, let's get going. I wouldn't count on luck this time. You damn well better be ready. Well, all right, that's what I like to hear. Get on in there. Let's find out if the newcomer can hold his own against real fighters. Release! Fight! And open gate. There it goes. Uh, I see you got those death claw things, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ, that echoes so loud. Ah, my ears. Uh. Here, I might as well grab that. Yeah, like, my damage reduction here is just so massive, that's how I was able to take care of it nice and easy. Not bad, Grinder, not bad. The Bear Brothers were some pretty mean sons of bitches. One more fight, and you're free. But I wouldn't plan on making it through the next one. Here's a shot for the Rads. Come back when you're ready for your last fight. Ready. You again? This'll be your last fight, Scab. One more, and I don't get to call you that anymore. You ready? Well, all right, that's what I like to hear. Get on in there. All right, more fun with the auto axe. I don't even get to hear an announcer going off or something. All right, anytime now. And dead. <laughs> Alright, so infiltrator. Nice, we got ourselves a perk out of that. Alright, so I think it said that there's uh, radiation and damage. 
Uh, resistance added to that. Yep, here you go. Nice and good. Anyway, to add on to that thing I picked up. Oh, I can't repair it? I guess, I guess they're all separate things, I guess. 